Today on the Uniweb interview show, I'm joined by author Josh Magnota, Nada, <laughs> Magnata. I always mess up names. It wouldn't be an interview with me unless I messed up somebody's name. Um, author of A Sweet Soft Glow. Now, this will be his first publication. Josh, thanks so much for joining the show, man. Uh, thanks for having me, Matt. I appreciate it. I mean, it's my pleasure. Um, it's always exciting. Uh, first book being published. Yeah. Um, it's, you still kind of get butterflies in your stomach, you know, it's still kind of hard, to, hard to grasp that I'm, that I'm there, you know? Yeah. Well, it's like having a kid almost. I mean, what was it? What was this? I want to kind of get into, uh, you know, what the idea was with a sweet, soft glow. Um, so first off, what's the book about? All right. So I feed a lot off of what I see with social media and the way that it impacts people. And so for the plot in my novel, it's there's a device kind of similar to a smartphone, for example. Mm -hmm. and people end up falling under its control. And then while under that control, they do things that they wouldn't normally do. Okay. So it leads to a bunch of chaos and they kind of try and take over society so that's where that's where that my story goes in that that avenue in that direction it sounds like kind of like a um uh i guess like black mirror or uh twilight zone kind of eerie yeah. realism it's funny that you mentioned that because twilight zone's probably probably my favorite show it's right up there really so, yeah it's well. It's one of those things where you take a mundane, normal, everyday thing that somebody has, and you twist it just a little bit to where it becomes this eerie thing that all of a sudden takes over <laughs> everyone's yeah, life. Definitely, and that's that's the unfortunate thing with what I kind of what I see with social media. Yeah, is that people aren't uh, for better or worse. They're trying to present their best image. Yeah. Or present on there and then it it's not who they are and yeah that's kind yeah. of where that yeah it's one of those where it's like we uh edit our lives to show only the best parts and it yeah. makes it hard to relate to people right right it does exactly yeah i know when um when writing too it sounds like this is something that obviously came from a uh, real world perspective on things did you when you were writing a sweet soft glow did you get a new perspective on the way you view social media, the way you view the world? Did it teach you anything? Um, not so much during the writing process. Beforehand is mm -hmm. kind of where the realization kicked in for me. I actually was introduced to the idea, um, listening to the Art of Manliness podcast with Brett McKay. Yeah. And he was, he was interviewing Nicholas Carr. And I was just floored by the interview like I didn't realize how much impact social media had so I went out and got Nicholas Carr's I got two of his books The Glass Cage and The Shallows yeah and I went through those and I was just like wow this is this is really crazy there could be feels like there's something there yeah a story potential and then I just kind of the story developed from that right so is there is it a like a main character, a uh, plot-driven story? Do you have multiple main characters, third person, first person? Um, kind of tell us a little bit more about the, the story as a whole. Yeah, that, so it's third person. Um, there's multiple characters, but there's a few that you're going to follow through the story more than others. Okay. There's side characters that come in and out. But the main character is John Malley, and he's got... Uh, his life is kind of he's become more of a recluse stuff that happened in his past he's kind of trying to forget about everything and mm. get away from society and then as he sees these events unfolding the people start uh, being controlled by the by the armbands is what they are and then he's kind of pulled pulled back into society he has to do something yeah he sees this and he can't just stand by so and watch what's happening yeah yeah he's the main character but 
You said armbands. Is this uh, like a futuristic tech t- kind of thing? Yeah. Yep. They w- it would wear the characters end up putting on an armband and they're deceived into why they want to wear the armband. So they mm-hmm. either think it's going to be beneficial for you know, health reasons or kind of keep them on track, organize their lives. And then lo and behold, it becomes this thing that. Governmental control conspiracies <laughs> not government it's not government control but it's i think that's the scary part is that a government thing it's just a device that you could buy at walmart or at a store somewhere yeah and you're and it's basically being watched all the time yeah yeah. yeah so when writing this though i know like um with authors that i've talked to in the past um, even for myself, like starting, I've started with an idea and the idea morphs into something I didn't even see coming um, when I get to the end of it is, first of all, I think that speaks to a little bit in terms of how we write. Are you more of a plotter or are you kind of somebody, or as they call it, a pantser? Do you kind of just write by the seat of your pants? Still figuring out the terms as best I can, but like I usually think of my ideas outside of writing so i'll be driving for a while or something then as the ideas i try and rework them and then when i sit down to write that's when i that's when i kind of put them to paper so i don't i think that puts me as a fanster but i'm not yeah i I think it's i think that's a up for debate right because i I feel like that's that is kind of what i do as well as a fanster hey hey Hey, that's there's an animal that lives by the seat of its pants right there. That that's <laughs> that's Ali. That's our new cat. Aldi. Ali, yeah, he's still Ollie. figuring things out around here. Yeah, just walking on in on people. That's cool. Um, we've had lots of cats on the show, just uh, <laughs> jumping in on people. <laughs> that's all right. Um, yeah, the pantser thing where where you just have the idea doing everyday stuff and then you come and bring it to paper. Is writing something that you've done your entire life or is this kind of an aberration, um, something brand new for you? You know, it's it's always been something that I've been interested in. And hey there. <laughs> yes, please continue. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. <laughs> so... When I was younger, I um, kind of developed this interest in writing when I was in elementary school. I think it was like fourth grade, third or fourth grade. We had these notebooks and we had to write whatever, you know, you get a prompt and you would write. Yeah. And I remember getting um, just some positive reinforcement from my teacher at the time. She would say that I was really creative and that my writing was really good. And it kind of gave me this this bump that, okay, I'm good at writing. Yeah. And then as you go into high school and stuff, you find out what you're good at, what you're not. And I just kind of, that always sat in the back of my mind, like, oh, I'm, I like writing. So I kind of leaned more towards English courses and writing classes that I could take. And that was, that was kind of like where I started writing. I would write just silly little short stories and stuff for my friends and know kind of gauge their reactions on that but after high school i kind of i actually got away from it a little bit not yeah not meaning to i just you start going to college you get busy with work and stuff and then all of a sudden it doesn't seem like a priority right for me when i started writing my novel i was actually working uh swing shift in a factory Mm -hmm. and it just after listening to the interviews and to reading Nicholas Carr's work, I was like, man, I could I could do something with that. And I wrote a prologue that was a little different than the novel. And yeah. then that just kind of sat for a while. I wrote that and then just left it. And then I came back to it a few months later. And then the rest of the story started to develop around that. It, I hadn't introduced the main character yet. It was just this idea on paper when i came back and started writing it that's kind of where i was like forgot how much i liked writing you know yeah i I do know 
<laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> writing writing's a funny thing because when you're away from it, you don't really think about it much until you sit down and start doing it again. You're like, God, this feels amazing. It's so fun to create different characters and new worlds and then sit back and look and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of kind of surprise yourself at times, it seems. Yeah, which is a fun thing to do. Um, how long did you take to actually finish the book? Like, is the book's finished, correct? Or is it? Yeah, I'm, we're doing editing stuff right now. Okay. But yeah, the book is done. It was uh, started in late 2016, early 2017, somewhere around there. And it took me about a year. I think I finished it in March, mm-hmm. March of 2018. So, so when it comes to your your writing schedule, I ask a lot of authors this: Did you like dedicate a certain time a day every day to write, or were you just like whenever something hit you, you you went and sat down and wrote? I tried. I tried to do mornings, and yeah. I wasn't as consistent as some authors. I know some people. We'll sit down religiously and write every morning or every evening, whenever it is. And I tried to, for the most part, I was I was pretty good. Um, I was trying to feed off of other authors and figure out how they wrote. So, like, I read Stephen King's on writing, and he said that he shot for two thousand words a day. Yeah. And I was, you know, nowhere near that. Maybe five hundred to a thousand. But if I yeah. hit that, I felt felt pretty good. Yeah. Well, it can be intimidating too, writing every day, um, especially if you have like a certain project. If you're working on just one book, like I know trying to sit down every single day and work in one direction can be really intimidating, and it can also be kind of stifling creativity, create creatively. Um, so I try to give myself like multiple different like notebooks in the morning if if I'm having like a notebook morning or a computer morning. Um, just depend because I feel like when I'm writing on the computer, like that's for the book, and then the notebooks are just for like whatever random weird thoughts are going on in my head. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely get that. And um, you asked about how I how I laid out my story earlier. Yeah, and I think that that kind of plays into it because I don't always have exactly where the story is going to go, mm-hmm. and I need that time to sort of think about it. So sitting down to write every morning kind of makes it, I might not have the idea of where I'm going with the story yet. Yeah. Because, I mean, when when creating storylines, it doesn't run linear, I've found. Like, it's always just like, you know, these ideas that just branch out like crazy. And then there might be something over here that connects to something over there. And then you can, like, tie them together and then move the story forward a little bit. But it takes time. I mean, it's a, it's definitely a, definitely a process. How did you go about um, once you finished the book finding? Because um, you're working with Fireside Publishing. Correct. Yes. Right. So how did you guys? How did you two um, meet up? It's that's probably the most frustrating part of getting a novel published is finding yeah. someone you can work with. Yeah. It was it was a solid year. Or close to it before I, before Fireside and I got connected. Yeah. Went through this entire book. It was, um, I think, John, Jeff Herman's Guide to Publishers. Yeah. Went through author, not author, um, publisher after publisher. And just, you get rejection letters or you get nothing. I would rather, honestly, I would rather get a rejection letter than just nothing. Yeah. That's the most frustrating part is you're sitting out there waiting and then you don't know. At least if you get the rejection, it's like, okay, well, I can move on from them. So it was it was a process before I found Fireside. And once I met up with them, though, it was it's been really great working with them. They've been you know, super, super supportive and really helpful in the process. Yeah. They didn't realize how much uh, how much editing it is before you can. I was actually done, you know? Yeah. There's a ton of read-throughs, right? Yeah. 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 A lot of revisions. That's the process you guys are in right now. Yes. Yeah. So there were 
reworking some of the stuff that I've written. It's it's exciting, you know. Um, I think a lot of people might have a negative perspective going into it, like, oh man, I have to rework rework all this stuff that I spent time writing. But I'm kind of looking at it optimistically, like I can make this I can make this better. I thought it was pretty good to begin with, but I can change some of these things and make it make yeah. it a stronger story. Well, it's like making it as tight as possible. It's just like packaging something that is as palatable and easy to digest as humanly possible. So when people get it in their hands, they're just like they can be they can be blown away by it, right? Yeah, that's I hope so. <laughs> that's the goal. That's the goal. Well, that's what I wanted to ask too. Like, what's um, from the moment you sat down and decided, hey, I'm going to write this book. I got this idea. Did you have a goal in mind for it? Like how you wanted it to do, what you wanted your writing career to be? Like, is this something you see yourself doing um, in lieu of other work for the rest of your life? Or is that the goal? Like, what are your that, ideas? That would be the end goal, yeah. But yeah. for right now, I've got, I'm working on this one, working on this novel. And I actually started started my second one a while back, but I've kind of put that, put that on the back burner for now. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of stories that I've I just kind of throw around in my head, and yeah. at some point I want to put them on paper. For now, I'm focusing on number one, get get my first book out there, and that was kind of going into the writing process with this. Once I started writing and realized, okay, I actually have a story here. I can write this. Yeah, that became I just wanted to get published. And yeah. kind of put that notch in my belt, like, okay, I've actually been a published author, and I can say that, you know. Yeah. Once it comes out, so that's that's where I'm at with that. But as for other works, yeah, I plan on writing more. Well, and it's tough too to like uh, when you have something that's being revised and edited. Um, it's tough to sit back and just completely switch gears to a whole another storyline because that one it's still fresh in your mind. You're, you're still thinking, you're still thinking about the storyline, especially if it's being reworked and tightened up and stuff like that. It's hard to uh, just put it aside and begin writing a whole nother novel. I think, I think there's that temptation and I won't speak for every author, but I'll, at least for myself, there's that temptation to want to start something new. Yeah. You're ready, ready to start that next one. You, you know, there's always that idea like, Oh, this, that's a really cool idea. Let's go run with that. Yeah. Well, that's the fun part of it, and that's what I come when we were talking about before um, we started recording. The fun part is the writing, the creating the stories. The hard part is everything that you have to do after that, which is what make like I said, makes or breaks the author, right? It's like as long as you're willing to invest pretty much, you know, the next five, ten years in a in a book that you wrote, then it can be successful. It's just. I'm figuring out that too, like after talking to so many different authors, that is what separates, you know, how much are you willing to invest in this one story? Yeah. Um, I myself, it's like, I'm enjoying this process right now. Yeah. A year from now, still working on this novel, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be itching to work on something new, but I'm, oh, yeah. I'm definitely, definitely enjoying everything at this moment. Um, I remember when I was reading Stephen King's writing stuff, he was like, by the time, by the time he's actually done with the novel and ready for it to be, ready for it to be out and people reading it, he's already, he's over it. He's yeah. not something else, you know? He's like, forget this book, man. It sucks. <laughs> Next thing. <laughs> Yeah, you got to, I mean, you definitely have to have that mindset. And um, I like to think, you know, writing is a lifelong journey to the the stuff we start with and how we how we finish our, our careers as writers. I mean, we're going to continue to learn until the day we die um, in this game, which is an exciting prospect because, I mean, even like looking back um, at the stuff I when I first wrote to what I write now, there's such a huge difference, you know. Like yeah. you said, you wrote the prologue, and then um, what you, and then you wrote the book. Was there a big difference in your writing from that time to the finish of the book? Yeah, yeah. As I'm as I'm writing, I'm 
continuously picking up things, how people sound, how things, how things sound when you're reading them, that when you started, you're just kind of like, let me put this on page and then worry about it later. But then right. by the end of the novel, I'm kind of consciously thinking like, okay, I don't necessarily want them to say that because that contradicts something that they said earlier. And it just kind of, uh, you have a more solid understanding sure. of how you're writing. And like you said, it, it is a lifelong thing. I hope that, I hope that all my other, I hope I always grow with yeah. each, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If, hopefully we don't get worse. That's what's just start. I think that comes with uh, entitlement, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll get worse if I get really rich and I'll just write crap for people to buy. That's the goal, man. <laughs> I was actually thinking about something like this the other day. There's um the interesting thing, like if you look at authors, if you look at music, different stuff, when someone first starts out, yeah, they're not, they're not afraid to take those chances because what have they got to lose? You know, right? I hope hope I never lose that because I think that's where some of the best material comes from. It's being willing to take a chance. Yeah, because you're writing for yourself at that point. When and then you become famous, you start writing because you think what 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 people want to hear as opposed to what you feel. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can see that. Um, luckily, I'm not there at all. Um, <laughs> maybe one day we both will, man. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, huh? that'd be cool. We'll have we'll have shows together, right? We can have yeah. We can do a show about how famous we are, rock stars, <laughs> rock star authors. Um, so, what what would you want to tell everybody um, about a sweet soft glow? Um, the the most important thing that you want people to get from it or that you feel is the heart of the story? I think the thing that I try to uh, impress the most is that that human connectedness. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's lost sometimes, not all the time, but I think that's lost sometimes on society. Because we are so interconnected, we can have we can have phone calls with people across the country, and we can talk to anyone in the world without without appreciating what's right in front of us. Without leaving our bedrooms, even. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so connectivity. I, I think that's the biggest thing, and I wanted to make I wanted to make the story um, very not just personal, but not personable, but um, emotional. I wanted people to feel that connection to the characters, and mm. good or bad, what they what they go through. So, would you consider this like a psychological uh, thriller, or um, yeah, yeah? yeah it, it's a falls under science fiction slash thriller. Thriller, okay, cool. A sweet soft glow, and that's you. Um, you said it's going to be available potentially next year. Hopefully next year, yeah. Hopefully okay. later next year. Hopefully, <laughs> depending on how revisions and stuff go. Yeah, yeah. Do you already have a cover and stuff worked out for it? Are you guys that's, working on that? That's also in the process. Cool. Um, kicked around, kicked around a few different ideas, but we're working on that. Yeah. Yeah, Blaze and Jay are good, good peeps. They're gonna do you right for sure. I like Fireside Publishing. Um, I also wanted to ask too, uh, with because you did say you sent out a ton of letters to publishers. Um, was there any in particular, like in, in terms of rejection letter? Did you get any creative feedback at all? Um, yes and no. It's kind of that generalized feedback where yeah. they say that this has a lot of potential, but we're just we're not going to accept it at this time. That's that's kind of the toughest part. Is oh, what about it? Yeah, good or was good, you know. So that's the that's the most difficult part. Yeah, you want to hear something that you can work on. Yeah, I would like I would like some concrete, concrete uh, criticism. You know, yeah. I went to college for English, so it's not 
I'm used to people critiquing, critiquing what I write. So that's not a big, that's not a big deal for me. I just need something concrete to work with. Right. Yeah. As opposed to something just in the gray. Um, I, I know that's a, that's a common, common thing for a lot of authors is just wanting something because otherwise, I mean, you just kind of go back to the drawing board and you just question yourself and sit there in the dark, like what the hell? <laughs> yeah. It just cause a lot of confusion. Are you still there? Sorry about yeah. that. That's okay. No worries. Yeah. That's the, that's the worst part is that confusion. And then you do question yourself a lot, even even in the editing process, you're wondering like, why wasn't this, why wasn't this good? And why wasn't it, you know, exactly what was right? Right. But trying to stay, trying to stay positive about it is difficult. But I think if you can stay positive and keep thinking that you're going to make this better all the time, like you said earlier, you're going to try and tighten this up so that it's, that's a better story when you're finished. Yeah. That definitely helps. And I think a lot of it does have to boil, does boil down to are we uh, as authors are we being honest with who we are are we getting our voice out there um, is this something we're enjoying you know I know am I taking an honest look at what I'm writing and not just looking at it like well I wrote it so it's good no matter what like yeah okay. and that can be tough too I mean that that comes with I think maturation as we get older. Um, and then just uh, writing and, and taking uh, rejections, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I think you build, like we said, you kind of build on everything that you've you've written beforehand, and then hopefully, hopefully, the stuff that I'm writing later is better than what I'm writing now. <laughs> That's the goal, man. Awesome. Well, ja Josh, uh, I appreciate your your time coming on here, uh, talking about a sweet soft glow. Um, hopefully, be available sometime early next year we can check it out then um josh thank you so much man all right thank you matt i appreciate it all right brother have a good one thank you guys so much for watching this video if you would subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell you know what we love you love you love you know what